Hello once again, what's up there folks? Hope you're all doing well out there. Uh, welcome to, I believe, the fifth. I'm starting to lose count now. There's been uh, quite a few. I think the fifth uh, video in the series about the New York Division Bergen line. Uh, if this is the first video and you just came across it, go back, watch number one through four if you'd like to, to get a bit of history. We've been going uh, from west uh, to east. Uh, we are now about two-thirds of the way done. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the map. Show you exactly where we're at. Here's where we sit right here. This is the Mawa Ford Assembly Plant. And it's just outside of Suffern. Suffern's basically over here. Mawa is technically down here, but I, I guess the way the... Uh, the city lines and all that work, I'm, I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's called the Mawa Assembly Plant, and that's what this video is going to be on today. Uh, we started way over here, made our complete, long, lovely journey. And we are now at Mawa, which is what we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, as it sits right now, we're going to say it's about 1972, 73, 74, so early 1970s. Uh, Erie Lackawanna is still very much in full swing. Uh, like I said before, this was their bread and butter um, for this area and the railroad as a whole from, from, I think if I'm remembering correctly. So this was it, man. Um, anyway, a little bit of history about the Mawa assembly plant. It was built in 1955 and it, at the time it was the largest motor vehicle assembly plant uh, in the U.S. of A. They pumped out over 200,000 cars a year, quite a few. Um, unfortunately, uh, some things happened with the plant. Not going to go too deep into it. The um, quality started to suffer a bit, and the final car, oddly enough, uh, on this date now that I think about it, the final car rolled off the line uh, on June 20th, 1980. So, over two decades ago, and a couple of days to the day, you know, being June 17th, 2021, right now. But anyway, we're just outside of the assembly plant at Suffern Yard. Uh, this is the yard right here out to the main line, that way Suffern. Uh, we are in New Jersey right now, so we're basically right on the border. We're straddling the border between New York, up this way, and mostly that way for the route, and Jersey down that away so cars would be staged out here that's what I've tried to represent here uh, so we've got some empty auto racks once again these are the machine rail uh, empty auto racks uh, if you did not see the last video I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and throw a link up in the description underneath the video of these so you can go and pick them up uh, as well as the American uh, branding uh, if you like uh, but these are cool man they come with cars of their own Either that or empty, as you can see here. Uh, now, they're not 110% prototypical because they were tri-level, uh, and these are bi-level, but they're the closest damn thing, and they're really cool. I really enjoy them. They look fantastic, uh, but they're really nice. Anyway, so this is kind of like a staging yard. They would pull stuff out of the assembly plant, uh, throw it out here, get ready to go on down the road or go into the plant itself. Um, now what you're going to want to do with this area, you can do whatever you want, honestly, but it would see um, about 34 uh, 86 footers, so we're talking about the big, super huge mega um, auto racks. Uh, you'd see about 20 high cube parts cars, 15 gondolas with car frames, so they would come in and then get finished off, not uh, not fully built when they arrived, obviously. And then you'd have some tank cars with uh, fuel, oil, solvents, things like that. Um, Got to keep the plant running somehow. But uh, in 1972, the freight came from Port Jervis uh, and racks stored on Track 3 in Slutsburg as well. So not just here. Um, I think the plant had two switchers, so I've, I've gone ahead and placed two switchers. We'll roll over there in a minute once we hop in these two dash twos over here idling. Um, but they, they had a couple of switchers of their own, and from what I've been told, the, the actual road engines could actually back in there and grab some cars and, 
and drag them back out. Either that or the, you know, the swisher might take care of it. Um, let's see. Make sure I go over everything I can possibly remember here. Anyway, I think it'd be like 25 to 30 car intervals. So we're not talking about cars. We're obviously talking about rail cars. So however many cars fit on a rail car. Um, and then I think they would drag anywhere over 30, but sometimes from 30 to 60, they would go ahead and haul them out of here. Uh, so that was the early 70s. Then 74, trains came from Croxton, which was this way. So Port Jervis is back this way. Up in New York, Croxton's down this way in Jersey. So that kind of changed hands a little bit. Um, but anyway, all these, when they were built, they'd traditionally be shipped to uh, Battle Creek, Detroit, Flat Rock. Uh, pretty much daily and on demand as necessary. Um, Jersey City, Port Jervis, so on and so forth. All right, so enough blabbering. Let's hop in these things. Let's go get over in the yard. All right, a couple of jointed rail searchlight simulation dash twos here in the Erie Lackawanna skin. So we're gonna back into the yard and start dragging out some of these uh, finished products, if you will. Hop in here and let it load, takes a moment. There we go. Go ahead and crack the winder. Engine run, gin field, control and fuel pump. Get our headlights on. Grounds and gauge lights. Make sure it's set to run, that it is. Get our number boards on. Looks like we're good to go. Go ahead and throw it in reverse. Get our independent brake on there, get rid of the loco or the train brake. Start coming off the independent here. Let's make sure our track, or our path, if you will, it is not. Alright, so that could have gone wrong real quick. Alright, there we go. All right, we're headed back into the assembly plant. We're going to hop over to Ford Lead 2N, and we've got a couple of racks filled up back here we're going to tie on to. There we go. Yep, these six here are good to go. All right, let's go see if we can't grab them. Go onto the bridge here. Go by the tower over here on your left, which, by the way, we found a minerman. He has been located. <laughs> so there he is, one of many places along the route. All right, let us continue. So we are backing into the yard. This place was massive. If you look at it now on uh, on GPS maps, whatever, I think it's a park. Now, what's crazy and and how he built this uh, was from older satellite imagery because essentially nothing is left on this place. No videos, only a few, very few pictures. Uh, especially with any kind of railroad, rail cars, engines, anything like that going on. Uh, so he went through great pain to create this place. Got a couple of bridges to cross over here under the power lines. 
and it's got a grade as well. It always catches me out every time I've been back here, even now as we speak. That grade caught me out. I believe that is still the Ramapo River right there as well that we just crossed over. All right, so Ford lead track two. site and it's 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 pretty cool what you can do with this place I I had quite a bit of fun trying to set this place up uh, in terms of you know Miterman's creation and I guess his vision for the place and uh, notes and details I've seen online from him uh, etc so you can kind of do whatever you want here but that's half the fun uh, of just running it without a doubt it's a lively place too, it's set up, um, you can throw in here pretty much whatever you want. Uh, so long as it's between about 1970 and 1980. <laughs> Here we are. We'll go ahead and clear the road here. All right, this place is sprawling. And that is an absolute understatement. It is absolutely massive. So over here, this first setup, we've got uh, several racks sitting here. They've got their own ramps. I mean, it is it is totally done up. It's it's very unique. Um, I would have liked to have gone farther and and grabbed these individual cars and kind of lined them up to, uh, towards the ramp here, but. I, uh, it, you know, for the essence of time, I, I just went with what we got here, basically. So we got a couple of guys standing around. Here's one of the switchers. Now, if I'm not mistaken, like I said, I think there were two switchers on hand. Uh, just for whatever it's worth, I went with the uh, the Erie HH600, which, if you don't know what that is, essentially it means high hood, 600 horsepower. Just, uh, just a little old switcher. Um... Pretty neat though. We got some fuel, solvent, whatever those might have been right there. This is obviously where you drop some tanks off. We got some pipes that would suck those underground into other tanks and whatnot. Got a few more back there as well. Got some, some guys just hanging out, taking a break or whatnot. Now this is the yard office, if I'm not mistaken. I would be led to believe that's what that is. Also right here we got this bridge that uh, heads into Suffern, which is pretty cool. So obviously you'd have to drive in somehow, right? So this would be, I'm assuming, uh, for the rail yard itself and workers. Uh, and then if you fly over here, I thought you could get out. Yeah, it looks like you can get out right there. So there's actually an on-ramp and an off-ramp, I think. Let's scooch way over here. Because this is actually the interstate right here, or freeway. Um, yeah, here it is. So here's the highway right here. So this is the, I don't know, I, maybe employees would come in through here as well. Who knows? Either way. But this place is huge, man. And it, and it it has that look. It looks like you would imagine back in the day. He's got the, the trees popped on either side of the front offices here where the big wigs would have sat. Got the flag up on the pole. Like, it's it's definitely a cool-looking area. Just the way he laid out the parking lots as well. They're, uh, they look good with the guardrails and whatnot. Different kinds of cars. Of course, they're all Fords, right? Because it's a, a Ford manufacturing plant. But another thing, obviously, that's, you know, definitely pertinent to note is this uh, massive building right here <laughs> does not exist uh, in the assets. So he made this 
by putting together, oh, I'm going to take a stab at like 20 other buildings. So you can definitely see here as you go through the layers of them. But when you look at something like this from the outside, it just looks completely natural. And that's what's so cool about this route and all these assets and buildings and whatnot. But the place is huge. Over here on the back side, we got some some old box cars being loaded up or dropping off some kind of barrels, maybe some oil, I'm assuming. I mean, they are cars. They do need oil and other fluids. Uh, I'm actually not sure what those are. But this would be a track where they was, uh, these would be sat. And, of course, there is a balloon track that goes all the way around here. So this bit, I like doing this every time, just flying through here with the free cam. Got a dude over here waving. Watch up, buddy. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and go through the plant here. A couple more guys, dude on a forklift. You can just zoom right through here. That's cool, man. <laughs> All right, here's our train. We've got some more loaded cars right here. Again, another ramp. So they would pull these in uh, as necessary, and of course they would fill them up. Now the cars obviously do not match. There's not much I can do about that. Um, but anyway, that's besides the point. So we got other stuff going on here. Another guy in forklift. There's probably a forklift army that ran this place. And all these cars like this that you see here are ready to go. Now these over here is where they would start to be staged and put on the trailers. Um, let's see, let's run over here. Again, this is where you would have the tanks. Probably need fuel, uh, paint obviously, some, some kind of cleaners, lacquer, um, things of that nature. Got the big uh, water tower going on there. A couple more tank cars and two big storage tanks. A couple more random box cars. I mean, this place is just very nice. It looks great. Got another guy over here. Forklift and even got a stop sign place there. Make sure you better watch out when you go in there just so you don't smash into a brand new car or someone. I mean, this place is absolutely massive, though. A couple of semi trucks back here. Now, I'm not too sure what all this stuff is back here, but I think it's part of the plant as well. Um, it may not be general store, so it just looks like a gas station or something. Maybe it's not. I do see a fence. Yeah, security fence, so possibly it's not. And I actually just noticed this for the first time. There's actually a speed board right here. All right, so the permitted speed is 15 and 10 that away through the uh, building itself. And then, of course, it follows the, uh, the Ramapo River right there, as you can see, going around. And back all the way down that way. So this way, again, is Jersey. Well, we're in Jersey now, but that's Jersey all that way. And then New York, basically just on the other side of that uh, that highway up there is New York. So back here is where all the cars would be staged. Uh, you'd have empty auto racks, box cars. These are the uh, the 86 foot um, auto parts cars, and I had a lot of fun with these. These are some nice looking cars. I got these off Railworks America as well. Um, I will post the link for these again, but it's it's an entire pack. And it's, honestly, with train sim, it's kind of hard to find some nice-looking older rolling stock. A lot of the modern stuff is covered and, and covered fairly well, but some of the older stuff like this, not so much. Uh, so this, this auto parts boxcar pack is amazing, and they just fit. They're right at home in here. Here's another one of our switchers, obviously doing whatever, you know, the engineers and the switcher would be doing back here getting stuff ready prepping we got another ramp right here which I just completely forgot about so there's it looks like three ramps I think here there's probably more but these are currently empty they're ready to go now these cars here are obviously ready to go they're ready to be set out so let's hop back in our dash 2 
See if we can't hook up to this uh, set of racks waiting for us right here. got those so we're gonna head back across the road and we'll come back and pick these up out back onto the lead need to clear that switch right there we can back up onto this other string but essentially this entire route if you want it to can be built around operations for this plant uh, if you want to play in that time period you can play in whatever time period you want it's it's train sim you can do whatever you want obviously um, you know but if you want to play outside post 1980 then uh, you know just ignore the plant otherwise you can just run operations entirely around this place all right let's back up and grab this other string here got that string so we're gonna go way back out onto the lead and back up into the other yard back here but you could set up all kinds of stuff in here you could do road freight you know dropping off cars picking up cars you can do some switcher stuff just setting stuff all over the yard and back out into the uh, suffering yard on the main line. There is just a lot that can be done here. But this place absolutely churned out cars. I think uh, it's well over 200,000 cars per year. I mean, it was it was uh, it was daily. It took priority uh, at the time when it was open from Erie Lackawanna. Absolute priority, getting these cars in and out. All right, I think we got to go all the way down. Yeah, yeah, we got to back on to one in. back out over the river here.
All right, let's see where we're at. All right. Pop on the brakes right here. Go ahead and flip the switch. Let's see. Oh, no, wait a minute. Yeah, these are empty here. Okay. Confusing myself. Oh, wait, no. Son of a gun, we did need to be on that other line. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. All right. Let's see. Yeah, it's not those. Let's see. Ford lead Mawa 2S. And then Mawa Yard Office. Ford classification. Alright, I believe these are our racks. Yeah, we'll grab that second pair right there. Alrighty, let's see if that works. We did not need to come all the way out here. That's a pretty sight. Alright, let's double check one more time. Better safe than sorry. Alright, two in, two in. by the empties right here now I don't believe uh, specific duties uh, would be done for the area if, if there was a road freight going on and they would come by Suffern and there was stuff to go then they would take it um, unless it was a you know a, a maximum order of maybe like 40 to 60 cars then that probably would be uh, a specialty job so you could easily be doing a, a road freight from, I don't know, say Croxton to Port Jervis, stop by here, grab some cars, add them to your uh, mix consist, and that wouldn't be uh, out of the ordinary. Go by the uh, supervisor here. Let her button up.
precious cargo too, so you don't want to be manhandling these things. I don't think they'd be too appreciative of that. There we go. Alright, we've got a pretty girthy string so far, so you can pretty much see what the operation's going to be like around here. It's, uh, I mean, it's just absolutely endless. Not sure what this building would be. Got some kind of radio tower. Now that, too. Now, <laughs> that's cool. It looks, uh, it looks like this was uh, crafted as well. The uh, the little porch here. That's yeah, pretty neat. But uh, there's a whole lot of stuff around this area. And it would be far too much to try to squeeze into one video. Um, but this is it, man. This is the Mawa Ford plant. Or the Ford assembly. Uh, unfortunately, no longer with us, but uh, at the time, it was the largest in the States. It was massive. It pumped cars out day and night. Um, but you can do all kinds of stuff with this place, and it's absolutely awesome. Almost said fantastic. <laughs> Gotta watch it. Too many fantastics. But it is. It's cool as hell. And you got these big-ass yard lights, too. Because they'd probably be working all hours of the night. I think uh, I think it was I think I was told three shifts per day, uh, and they just kept on rolling, man. But yeah, that's it. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the map here as well. Uh, another nice thing about it is it's all labeled, so you, you know what you got going on here. So there's a balloon loop. We can actually see what this is here. Yeah, chemical building. So that's why those tanks or uh, barrels were being pulled out of there. This is the engine lift. Now, I don't think locomotives are allowed through here. And if you look at the manual that uh, Minerman has lovingly created for this whole route, uh, there are hydraulic uh, lifts all through these lines here. So a gigantic uh, locomotive would obviously damage that. So I don't think... Um, you would drive an actual engine through there. Maybe maybe one of the yard goats or switchers. Um, but it's got everything labeled. It's got everything you need to know uh, for the most part. Where it goes what, what goes where, who goes there. All that fun stuff. But it's, uh, it's an absolutely cool place, man. And it's not only that, but the different kind of rolling stock you can use and engines and whatnot. It's just... Uh, there's, you know, just like everything with the rest of this route, there's hours and hours and a ton of time to be spent on this place. And uh, even the reservoir here, that's cool with the pipes. Sucking the stuff out. I believe it'd be sucking it out. Maybe dumping it in. I'm not really sure on that. But the place is massive, man. It is absolutely massive. Just huge. But anyway, that's it. A, a little quickie over the Ford uh, assembly plant at Mawa. Um, that's going to be it for this video. The next video, we've got another uh, branch line, which I'm equally excited about over here. Um, that I, I've already got set up. Uh, it's going to be ready to go. It's going to be the next video. Uh, it's an old Erie line. But anyway, we'll get more onto that in the next one but uh that's gonna be it for this one thanks for hanging around and watching go and check this out for yourself and uh see what you can come up with i mean there's there's a lot of opportunity and uh option here but that's it for now Mawa ford assembly that's it thanks for watching guys i'll catch you on the next one bye